is the sea. What sun could burn it up? From cold, dark depths, I'll fetch your bright red stain. Your life warm dye will drench your kingly robes. The price, my lord, is high. But with God's help, we gladly pay. Since when was your house poor? How many treasure vestments would I tread? If I was told by some palace oracle, if such acts would bring back that precious life. So long as the root lives, there still lives the cool green overshade against sun's burning heat. So your return to your cold palace hearth is like a warm spring day that falls in autumn, like a breath of summer snuffed in the winter hall, where Zeus squeezes out the red wine from the bitter grape. And so, the house receives back its finished king. Zeus, you finish all. Bring my prayers their end. To what you have waited to finish. Now, attend. Knowledge is not wisdom. Cleverness is not. Not without awareness of our death. Not without recalling just how brief our flare is. He who overreaches will, in his overreaching, lose what he possesses. Betray what he has now. That which is beyond us? Which is greater than human? The unattainably great is for the mad. Or for those who listen to the mad. And then believe them.
She is the lioness. She is the savagery. When the lion's away, she's the bed company kept by the skulking jackal. Does nobody see? A potion's made. One ingredient's death for me. And hear this, she boasts as she wets the knife for her he. That death's the price of his triumphs, including me. So why stand to be laughed at in clothes of prophecy, in Apollo's necklace with staff of augury, so these meet their end? Before my end arrives, for me. To hell with you all. Thus, your fall pre-avenges me. Apollo's power can now hoard ruin for some other she. I am divested, defrocked, disrobed, and he does this to me. As he just watched while these robes brought me mockery. As he just watched while his truths and my prophecies destroyed every bond between me and my family. Destroyed so they cast me out, wandering in penury. Destroyed so they shut me out, dying in poverty. And now, Apollo, the prophet, forecloses on me. Devises a fate that bristles lethality. Instead of the fatherland altar awaiting me as a chopping block, warm with the blood of the slaughtered he. But why should I wail as if others would pity me? These are the eyes that saw out Troy's tragedy, and now the death of Troy's killers is what they see. These are the gods' black mercies, and they await me. The door of this house is like the threshold of hell for me. I pray to meet with a well-timed stroke of death, to bleed out quietly, succumb without fighting for breath. That easy submission may close out the light from these eyes. Oh, uh -huh. 
Was it not enough to take away the flowery meadows and the light of day? Or not enough to take from me the once loved faces I used to see? To take away sweet sounds and melodies, the songs of birds, the rustle of trees, to make the prattle of children cease and to wrap my soul in shadowy hollow peace, devoid of longing. Oh no, not for me. For those who die, your friends this rest shall be. For me, no rest from shame and sore distress. For me, no moment of forgetfulness. For me, a soul that might still love and hate, shut in this fearful land and desolate, changed by mine eyes to horror and to stone. For me, perpetual anguish all alone, midst many a tormenting misery, because I know not if e'er I shall die. Thank you. 
Our own bad luck does not make us benevolent toward those who are worse off. And the thing is, no breeze of Zeus has ever come here. No ship brought Helen through the clashing rocks with her Menelaus to pay back what they did to me. They murdered me! As if I was a sacrificial calf and my father the sacrificing priest. I cannot forget those evils. How many times did I fling my hands at his face, crying, Father, you marry me to degradation. While you're killing me here, my mother and her women in Argos are singing wedding songs. Our house fills with the music of pipes as I die at your hands. Achilles, it seems, was Hades' son, not Peleus's. You gave me him as a husband and steered me into a wedding of blood. It was just a filthy trick.
divine air breezes on swift bird wings, ye river fountains and of ocean waves, the multitudinous laughter Mother Earth, and the all-seeing circle of the sun, behold what I, a god, from gods endure. Look down upon my shame, the cruel wrong that racks my frame, the grinding anguish that shall waste my strength till times ten thousand years have measured out their length. He hath devised these chains, the new throned potentate who reigns, chief of the chieftains of the blessed, ah, me! The woe which is and that which yet shall be, I wail, and question make of these wide skies, when shall the star of my deliverance rise? And yet, and yet, exactly I foresee all that shall come to pass. No sharp surprise of pain shall overtake me. What's determined to bear as I can, I must, knowing the might of strong necessity is unconquerable. But touching my fate, silence and speech alike are unsupportable. For boons bestowed on mortal men, I am straitened in these bonds. I sought the fawn of fire and hollow reed, hid privily a measureless resource for man and mighty teacher of all arts. This is the crime that I must expiate. Hung here in chains, nailed neath the open sky. <laughs> what echo? What odor floats by with no sound? God wafted or mortal or mingled its strain. Comes there one to this world's end, this mountain girt ground to have sight of my torment? Or of what is he fain? A god ye behold in bondage and pain. The foe of Zeus and one at feud with all the deities that find submissive entry to the tyrant's hall. His fault, too great a love of humankind. Ah me! Ah me! What waft your nigh at hand as of great birds of praise, this I hear? The bright air fanned whistles and shrills with rapid beat of wings. There cometh naught but to my spirit brings horror and fear. Yes. 
avec nous. Je verrai le témoin de la flamme adultère observer de quel front j'ose aborder son père. Le cœur, 
Gros de soupir qu'il n'a point écouté. L'œil humide des pleurs par l'ingrat rébuté. Penses-tu que sensible à l'honneur de Thésée, il lui cache l'ardeur dont je suis embrasée Laissera-t-il trahir et son père et son roi Pourra-t-il contenir l'horreur qu'il a pour moi Il se tairait en vain. Je sais mes perfidies, Yonon, et ne suis point de ces femmes hardies qui, goûtant dans les crimes une tranquille paix, ont su se faire un front qui ne rougit jamais. Je connais mes fureurs, je les rappelle toutes. Il me semble déjà que ces murs, que ces voûtes vont prendre la parole et prêtes à m'accuser, attendre mon époux pour la désabuser. Mourons de tant d'horreur qu'en pas mes délivres. Est-ce un malheur si grand que de cesser de vivre La mort aux malheureux ne cause point d'effroi. Je ne crains que le nom que je laisse après moi. Pour mes tristes enfants, quel affreux héritage Le sang de Jupiter doit enfler leur courage. Mais... Quelque juste orgueil qui inspire en son si beau. Le crime d'une mère est un pesant fardeau. Je trempe qu'un discours, hélas, trop véritable, un jour ne le reproche qu'une mère est coupable. Je tremble qu'opprimé de ce poids odieux, l'un ni l'autre jamais n'ose lever les yeux. The anger and strong feelings in your heart are dreadful, Father. But in this matter, though your arguments sound quite plausible, if one looks into the issues closely, your case against me does not match the facts.
I have no skill speaking to a crowd. With a small group of people my own age, I am more eloquent. That's as it should be, since those men whom the wise consider fools are often better speaking to a mob. But now, in the face of this calamity, I must loosen my tongue. To begin with, I will speak to your first accusation, which you assumed would overpower me and leave me incapable of a response. This sunlight and earth you see around us do not hold a man more virtuous than me, no matter how much you deny the fact. First, I know how to reverence the gods and to cultivate good friends who do not act unjust. Men who would be ashamed to make perverse requests of their companions or respond to them with vicious favors. I do not mock those I spend my time with, Father. And I always treat my friends the same, whether they are with me at the time or not. As far as concerns the act for which you think you have now proven my guilt, that is one thing of which I am completely innocent. My children, my boys, you still have a city and a home where you will live your lives far from me, bereft of your mother forever. Well, I must go to another land, denied my joy of you, never to see you happy or married. A victim of my own will. So it was all in vain that I reared you. In vain did I suffer the cruel pain of childbirth. I had hoped to God that you would take care of me in my old age and prepare my corpse with loving hands. Now that dream is dead and gone, for I must lose you both and drag through life with bitterness and sorrow. You shall never see your mother again with those fond eyes. Why do you look at me so, my boys? Why that last sweet smile? What am I to do? My heart melts when I see their laughing eyes. I can't. I can't. No more schemes. I will take my children far from here. Why should the children I bore be sacrificed to hurt their father? It would only hurt me twofold. I won't do it. Goodbye, my schemes. But what is this feeling? How can I let my enemies escape punishment when continue to mock me? I must do it. Get a hold of yourself. How could I be so soft? Whoever feels that they must not be present at my sacrifice, leave now. 
You will not stop me. My heart. Do not, my heart. Don't do this. You can spare them. You can let them go. They'll live. They'll cheer you in your exile in the new city. By the fiends of Hell's Abyss, I will not let them take my children for them to mock and flout. Their doom is fixed, and there is no escape anyway. So as the mother who bore them, I will deliver the fatal blow. But since I would have you know, for I do not know how it will end. I, I think I am a charioted tear driving my team far beyond the course, for my ungoverned wits are whirling me away over mastered, and in my heart fear was to sing and dance to a tune of wrath. While I am still in my senses, I proclaim to those who hold me dear and declare that not without justice did I slay my mother, the unclean murderess of my father and a thing loathed by the gods. And you have done well. Therefore do not yoke your tongue to an ill omen speech, nor let your lips give vent to evil forebodings, since you have freed the whole realm of Argos by lopping off the heads of two serpents with a fortunate stroke. Oh! 
You handmaidens, look at them there! Like gorgons, wrapped in sable garments entwined with swarming snakes. I can stay no longer. What fantasies disturb you, dearest of sons, to your father? Wait, do not be all overcome by fear. To me, these are not some imagined troubles. Indeed, these are the hounds of wrath to avenge my mother. It is that the blood is still fresh on your hands. This is the cause of the disorder that assails your wits. O oh Lord, O oh Paolo, look. Now they come in troops. And from your eyes trips loathsome blood. There is one way to cleanse you. The touch of Loxias will set you free from this affliction. You do not see them. But I see them. I am pursued. I can stay no longer. 